Bet you've heard of the three sisters method of gardening, but what if I told you that it's not a very good way to garden for most home gardeners? Here's why. If you're not familiar with it, the idea is to plant corn, beans, and squash together. The corn plants grow tall and they also provide a place for the bean plants to climb up as they produce their bean stalks. Also, since beans are a nitrogen fixing plant, they're going to provide crucial nutrition for the corn to grow. And the squash plants with their large leaves and growing closer to the ground are going to stop weeds from competing with the entire garden plot. And all of this in theory sounds really awesome and you can find tons of tutorials and guides online about why this is such a cool way of planting plants. In the real world though, in people's backyard gardens, it doesn't always work out so great. First of all, the indigenous people that pioneered this method used different varieties of corn and beans and squash than most home gardeners are using today. And this is a really important point because what you'll see in most cases when home gardeners try to do this is that the beans can end up growing too crazy on the corn and actually end up overpowering it or toppling it over, especially in areas where you have high winds. And even if you do manage to find a good strong variety of corn that can hold up to the weight and vigor of the bean stalks, harvesting becomes a real nightmare. So imagine you're having to step over these huge squash plants, first of all, but you've got all of these corn plants and then they're all just tied together by bean plants. You are not going to be able to access the plants that are more than two or three feet away from you to try and be able to harvest beans or corn or squash for that matter, because it just becomes a big tangled mess. And walking amongst and diving into squash plants, well, that can be kind of hard on your skin too. Not to mention if you live somewhere that has creepy crawlies around like rattlesnakes, it can be a bit sketchy to reach your hand in places where you can't see. The other reason why this is so much different for gardening nowadays versus how many indigenous cultures used to do it is the timing of when they would harvest. The method actually works quite well if you are going to harvest dried corn and dried beans. And that's most likely what the indigenous farmers were doing in these cases. Instead of going in daily and fighting your way through the patch to try and harvest a few bean pods or corn ears, it would actually naturally allow these plants to complete their life cycles and begin to die and dry up before they would go in and harvest everything all at once. And that's because the dried corn was better for using as a grain and the dried beans were better for using for storage long term. And squash and pumpkins, when they're allowed to ripen on the vine, can be stored for quite a long time for the winter periods where they didn't have a lot of food options. More modern methods of farming where we can actually use crop rotation or fertilization or amending of our soil in our home flower beds are just a lot more effective and a lot better for getting those big yields and daily harvest that the backyard gardener loves. This is not anything against the three sisters methodology or how people used to farm in indigenous cultures. It's just probably not the right fit for most backyard gardeners. But if it is something that fascinates you and you wanna try it at your house, by all means, give it a shot. Let me know if you've ever done this method of gardening down in the comments.